Hello and welcome to the Raising Men Show, and I'm your host, Craig Carlisle. Do something different in there today. We're going to do a new series. And we're still working on the title. You know, I have it right now is Our Story. And we've actually never sat down and told our story before together to each other and kind of our version of our story. I've heard, you know, we've been out places and I know I've given my testimony or when we were doing the film Restored Me, we were out, I was out telling a section of our story from my perspective. It was my version of our story. But when we can have a chance now, we're going into eight years since, you know, your guest mom died, my late wife passed. So it's a different perspective, you know, when Kate and I, you and I were talking out on the patio about just the gospels, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, when it talks about the account of the seven miracles that were given as Jesus as examples, but it was told from three different perspectives. We have actually six different perspectives on the death of your moms. So it's a chance I really want us to take to really get a chance to look and see what that looked like, looked like to each one of us, because your guys' version of love for your mom is different than my version of love for your mom. I have a passionate, you know, erotic love version towards her versus you all have a a mother son type of love towards her, which has a different root and at the core. So in a, how we would perceive things and receive things and even go back and imagine things, there's going to be a difference and how we look back upon those eight years that we've come out of eight years ago. Think about it. Where have you been? anything about the last eight years till now that makes life different than where were you then where were you then I and we can go from there uh oh for sure I think that from compared to eight years ago we've definitely all grown in our like separate paths are like own personally physically like so much has changed with our uh, with our own personalities uh our styles uh just our way of life in general uh i think like for me at least uh when mom first passed like the year it happened it was definitely like a sad and confusing time for me I think for all of us, actually. Sorry, I don't know why I'm saying just me, but it was I'm like was absolutely <laughs> ecstatic. <now>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I remember just the first day we actually went back to school after like grieving for a good couple of days. I still didn't even want to go to class. I remember I just went to the nurse's office and just kind of cried for a good couple hours mm-hmm. until <laughs> sorry. Made me think of nurses' offices. <laughs> Sorry, that the, the brought back something out to later. No, <laughs> uh, I remember I had the the pillow that we made with mom that had our handprints on it and stuff. I brought that with me to school, and I just kind of still have yours. Yeah, I still have mine. It's in my room. I uh, I keep it on my beanbag. Um, it was just uh, I just sat in the like the nurse's office and kind of just cried with the pillow for a couple hours and. I think I either stayed there for the rest of the school day or I eventually went back to class. But it was like I still didn't want to be at home. I I, I wanted to be at home. I didn't really want to go to school because I didn't feel like I was ready to go back out into the world and deal with, like, you know, the passing of mom and try to, like, go back into, like, normal life because it was, like, all so abrupt and everything. Like, because we had, like, a couple of months or a couple of weeks before we had, like, mom had just gotten to come back home and we were all so happy and everything. And then everything kind of just shifted immediately after she went back. And that was definitely like, wait, what just happened? I thought, I thought we were done. I thought we were fine. Every, we, everything was cool. I thought we were going to get to have mom back, but uh, sadly it didn't really go that way. So it was definitely really hard to like get through that first year for sure because it was like almost like little things would remind me of her and I was like I it kind of like made it hard to function throughout the rest of that year but I think one of the main things that really helped us the year after was definitely Kesem for sure that was one of the best things that ever happened to us 
Yeah, I'm, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, that first year, like you, I really, like, I totally forgot about this, but in elementary school, um, I would get into this, like, uh, I would just go to the nurse and make up something so I wouldn't have to be in class because, like, sitting in class, I don't know about you, but it felt like it was, like, you can kind of become hyper aware of everything and it feels like people are looking at you mm-hmm. and it's like, well, yeah. I can't let people know I'm sad or whatever, but it was like, I was already a crybaby, So like I was crying in class and then either get pulled out of class or I would just go to the nurse's office because it felt like a happy medium where I didn't have to go to class or didn't want to go home yet. Or at least, no, I knew that dad wasn't going to pick me up, nor was Shane. So I was like, I'll just sit here in the nurse's office. And it got to a point where they were like, well, this kid's going to sit up here. I guess we'll just, there's nothing wrong with him, so we'll let him sit at the library. And I would sit with the librarian, and we would just like I would help her like either organize books or help her check out books the kids that were coming to the library, whatever. And then it would be kind of awkward with my class to finally come to the library, and then kind of like how do I explain to them that I'm sitting in the library because I don't want to sit in class, <laughs> and I don't really know why I'm continuously going up to the nurse. But like no one, really, none of the teachers or none of the staff really kind of gave me a um, problem or kind of gave me. A, trouble for it so i was like it kind of like i I, it would be like multiple weeks i would be doing this but it wasn't like of course i was sneaking out i was like i would ask my teacher if i can go but i think they kind of knew there was something wrong and they were just like letting me go yeah the the teachers at at south shore were definitely they were pretty understanding people they kind of and some of them were very nice i like talking to a lot of Mm -hmm. them and uh I think, I, oh, it, hmm? I think they could really tell there was like a, a shift because like if all of us because like we're already the what three well the you was, and I yeah around the same age two you don't really see a whole lot of siblings and around the same age at least at that school you didn't <laughs> black siblings and nothing else right As actually like the, when when mom passed Evan was in first grade I was in third grade and you were in fourth grade so it was like three of us and Jackson and was one in time like, yeah Jackson was in preschool and we had similar teachers so it's like you can't really mistake us one the last name two we were the very few negroes mm-hmm. you'll see at that school but yeah and a lot of teachers from even some teachers that I didn't even have a class with who I just like sometimes would talk to or like our classes would do stuff together. They also started to like pick up on like our like different shifted behaviors and everything. So they were like, they would come talk to, I would get uh, some of the teachers would come talk to me, check in, like see if I'm doing okay. Um, and I would just like, sometimes I think they would let me sit out sometimes that I just wasn't feeling up to doing any like activities. Cause I didn't really, I, I definitely feeling uh, hanging out with my friends helped like, uh, help me go back to um or just ease back into doing normal stuff but um like when i wasn't hanging out with my friends and it was just like i was just left alone with my thoughts so like daydreaming in class it was definitely like it was difficult for sure because sitting in class you, you get bored and don't want to pay attention and it's like well what trauma do you want to deal with right now yeah or think about right now so it was like that or go to the nurse's office and sit with the library. <laughs> yeah. I think the only teachers that, in elementary school that really knew what was going on, sorry, um, were, I forget her name, the lady, Miss R or whatever. Ms. She, I think her Reinbold? name was like Miss Rubin or Reinbold. But yeah, Miss Reinbold. Your fourth grade teacher, Miss Reinbold. Yeah, I think because I was like constantly and crying for like, too. yeah, because those two like shared a class for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But she would like, she was the most understanding with like, let me sit outside. And like crying, and so I would have to sit in front of the class, literally crying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they they all knew what was going down. Yeah. So the school the school knew, mm-hmm. you know, and their and their job to you know as teachers is to make sure they're they're checking in. I don't even remember how long we stayed out after mom dad. Uh, we like two stayed, weeks uh, or a month or something. Out, like, like out of school. <clears throat> out of school. I think it was like a couple of weeks. I don't I, think it ever got to a month though. I think it was like two weeks at least. Cause I remember we were. We'd have lots of people over for like parties and stuff, and then we'd wake up late for school, and then as and then never be like we don't have to go to school. I was like okay, and then I don't I would play like video games or the Wii throughout the day. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we were out, we were out for a while, well, not not a long time, but I remember we we would go like maybe like a day a week, but there was like at some point we kind of had to go back legally. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> or else it was like what was it, like what, excused absences. 
like what's the word that like i forgot the word but it's like a if parents like uh, and just knowingly about... don't send their kids to oh, school truant yeah truant yeah. i don't know why i wanted to say treason <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah that that first year was definitely really really hard because i remember the day you told us like all the family everybody was there uh i thought it was going to be good news at first because i was like oh everyone's here all the cousins uncle aunts everybody was there mm-hmm. the one person we're looking for was not there yeah <laughs> for the good news. Yeah. Yeah. and uh and then i remember when i like i was told i was like i remember i went upstairs and kind of just cried in like one of the chairs upstairs and like I think I cried myself to sleep, and then I woke back up, and everybody was gone. I think it was an ugly cry, probably. Yeah, well, that's everything. Well, so, and no <laughs> according thing. to you guys. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Think it ugly crying. What's it called? It was we were. I, it was like one of the first few years after mom had passed, and we were driving somewhere, and then you start crying, but like you do an ugly cry. No, it's not like not like I'm making fun of you for it. It's like you just you the fact that you do an ugly cry, and then. I think some of us started crying, but at the same time, I was like, can you stop crying, please? <laughs> I want to feel bad for you. I really do. And then, uh, what's it called? Dad pulled the car over because Ryan was just crying so bad. Mm. And then we all were just crying. I don't know where we were. It was dark. I don't. I think we were going home from yeah. church, probably. Or from Center Point or whatever. I don't know. I don't well, think we started going to Center Point until we got to, like, middle until you, oh, yeah, no, you middle, and I got to, like, middle, middle school. school. Yeah. I don't, I don't know where we were coming from, but it was dark. Yeah. Well, we, we've had a couple of pullover moments, so yeah, you know, it, was good... <clears throat> it just depends on which one you pull on. <laughs> <laughs> which one do you remember? <clears throat> yeah, which one? Which one stands out to you the most? Yeah, uh, and then like I think it was summer of fourth grade, like like I, well after I, I had just finished fourth grade, Caden just finished fifth grade, and it was like I think a couple weeks before actual summer kind of hit. Uh, it was like, ne- like really close to the end of the school year. Miss um, Smith and AJ came, and they were like, uh, since AJ was going to UCLA, he found out about uh, uh, Camp Kesem because it's like a club that they have at different campuses and like, at different colleges because it's like all around. For a second, and- I was like, why are you explaining it? We all know what it is. I was like, oh, we're doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So... Um, he came, uh, they came and AJ was like, oh, so I found this because I think AJ's dad had, he had cancer and passed also. I'm no, sure. he had dementia. Dementia. Oh, dementia and then he sorry. went in for surgery and the surgery he had, I think for knee replacement, he actually had a heart attack or something. He wound up not doing well after that. I remember, Miss, it was off topic, Miss Rose, the one thing that sticks in my head, she said um, he had woken up one time it was speaking fluent spanish he had never taken spanish before and was speaking fluent spanish but that's crazy that's all who you hire as your realtor matters you need a realtor who looks out for your best interests and not their own marie clark with allison james estates is a full-time realtor specializing in helping first-time home buyers in temecula and the surrounding areas she is also a ministry leader Today, why don't you choose Marie Clark to buy or sell your next home? Please call 951-265-6259. This is Craig Carlisle, the host of The Raising Men Show, and I'm also an executive producer of the independent feature film Restored Me. It's a powerful, feel-good dramedy that centers around a young man trying to restore his relationship with his young daughter and her mother after his wrongful incarceration. This film speaks to restoring your faith and pushes a bold message of positivity and motivation. The cast includes Gary Owen, Bill Duke, Will Young Lee, Matt Gerald, Richard T. Jones, Malik Yobo, Yancey Arias, and both Casper Smart, just to name a few. Restore Me is available on over 100 digital markets including iTunes, Amazon, and on demand from your local cable provider. Buy it. Rent it. Either way, I'm asking you to watch it. It'll bless your life. You're listening to The Raising Men Show with your host, my dad, Craig Carlisle, on WKBY 1080 AM. All right, so we're back from break. We got a little phone call, so shout out to a friend of, us that are, a friend of ours that actually called in from the um, 
hospital actually got a chance to see him we haven't talked to him in a little while so shout out to you thank you for calling thank you for calling he had life in his eyes he That's did have, he did have light light and life in his eyes that was <laughs> kind of touch and go there for a minute we weren't really sure what we were going to find out it's really just talking about our life and we wind up talking about the death of one person we didn't have to talk about the death of another person <laughs> as a part of the series that will be part two but um, I know it will not be one. Oh, I know huh? we, you guys we'll just, give them a podcast oh I don't give you a podcast for sure what not to do in this day and age but um, <laughs> no nah, just kidding for you guys now you guys talked about first year for you guys was weird um, and hard the first year for me I think was what should I think it was, it was tough you know because you mentioned the people coming over to the house mm-hmm. and that was actually the second meeting um because we i don't know if you remember we actually had another meeting when mom was there before she went to the hospital we had a meeting with with that almost that same group of people where she was actually kind of we sat together and we were, we were she was explaining that she's going to go to the hospital for a while and she's going to have this treatments and stuff and and actually kind of get prepared for what cancer was really going to look like as far as we knew for a while because we were actually preparing for her to go for a stem cell replacement so that's really what that pre meeting was but and i and i think it's interesting because part of the grief process we amnesia is a part of the process Mm -hmm. so a lot of things we probably each will not remember and someone else will remember something different i remember um we went to disneyland I remember those like two, three Disneyland trips we had. I don't know if they were before or after mom passed, but I remember they were there. I think, well, well, one of them for sure was after because we went with uh, Rose Miss Smith Ch- and, and Miss Ms. Carol Downs. Carol Downs. Uh, that, that one I remember for sure. And I, and I remember arguing, I think, with you guys talking about we had never been to Disneyland before. And, this, and as far as I knew, that was our first trip to Disneyland as a squad. But you guys were like, no, no, we've been to Disneyland before. We've been to Disneyland before. And I had totally you know, had it stricken from the record that we had gone when Kasha had really had bought tickets for a lot of us with one of her per bonuses or something she had gotten. And so we had all had gone like way back. I think it was even when uh, Jean, your grandma Jean was alive. I want to say, and I could be oh, wrong yeah, I don't there. remember that then. I, I don't remember that. I remember we went to SeaWorld a lot. I remember that. Yes, yeah, that I was, do. Yeah, we did a lot of SeaWorld. But that was like before Mom was sick. Yeah, that's yeah. before Mom was sick. She was, we bought SeaWorld passes and it was we thought it was easy for us to kind of run down to SeaWorld and go, you guys were small kids, and so and SeaWorld. A, a lot of things to touch, and yes. water, and animals, and reading. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. not so much reading. But well, you know. I mean, like you read about, the, I mean, like you read about the animals, and it's like, <laughs> this, that, and the third. Yeah, I, I remember when you guys, I remember having to come home, and that one meeting you talk about when you've heard about mom was not coming back home, right? Mm-hmm. That meeting, was the second of the day for me. Because mm-hmm. we had actually come and met Shane at over at your, our cousin Brandon's house, and we told him first. Mm-hmm. And that was tough. I found that for me... Why did you decide to um, tell Shane first? Well, I mean, he's the oldest. Well, I mean, right. I, I get that. but I get, Well, I guess it's different than having to explain it to Shane and then explain it to younger kids that don't get it yet. Plus, no. I also remember, because Shane, like, of course, like Shane had a different dad. Before, like sure, he was with mom before dad, so mm-hmm. he technically knew mom the longest, I guess. So it would and make that sense. was the only reason why I told him first, mm-hmm. because we were a blended <clears throat> family, right? Mm-hmm. And one of my concerns was if something happened to his mom mm-hmm. before he turned eighteen. My concern was, well, what can what can really happen? Because legally, I could I had no jurisdiction. He wasn't adopted. His dad wasn't having that, so I, I was just going to end up being the placeholder dude that he that Shane lived with. In oh, the you eyes didn't of actually the, adopt Shane? No. Oh, I never actually knew that. Oh, yeah, okay. make sure you guys keep speaking up so we get you on the mic. Okay. Um. So I didn't, I didn't have any jurisdiction, mm. right? So because your mom was alive, I never had to worry about it. But as she got sick and it became an issue. Mm-hmm. Well, I should say that. Let me cancel those words. It did not become an issue. It it could have become an issue, but the grace of God allowed us for it not to become an issue because when mom passed, it was the day before Shane's 18th birthday. Mm-hmm. So the, it, it could have only been an issue for a few hours. And then when he turned 18, 
he was a legal adult. He could make all of the, the choices of his own home volition, even at the medical. So he was okay. And that's mm-hmm. where I think grace really comes in because had mom passed sooner, his Shane's dad could have easily, mm-hmm. easily. And our, you talk about a different frame of mind we would be in then dealing with the be. loss of mom and then the loss of Shane to the point where, and we did lose him to a degree because we took him to Ohio State. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah, yeah. I looked at my, my body took that as grieving mm-hmm. because he wasn't there, mm-hmm. but it wasn't grieving because he was still a part of us, but it was just a lot of not here constantly that your brain doesn't differentiate from when you're going through a lot already. Yeah. Because the way my brain looked at it is I was going to be alone because I was taking care of you all because you guys were really young. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he was, he, since he was 16 at on all the way to 18, he would help drive. You know, I had three drivers in the house, me, mom, and Shane. Mm-hmm. So when you all had activities and stuff to go do and Shane had stuff he was going to go do, it became so much simpler. And then all of a sudden mom's gone, Shane's gone, one driver, holy crap, what are we gonna do now? You know, and then even on the, do you guys remember when we took him to Ohio State? I which one? Vague. The yeah. first time to, to next one to take him to drop him. I, I kind of remember it. And yeah. Like not come back. Oh, yeah. I remember. We. Oh, I'm sorry. I remember we would walk down like the the school campus, and there would we bought like souvenir stuff. We bought like um, jackets. They were like kind of thin ones. We bought like these silver sock puppet mm-hmm. monkey thingy. Mm-hmm. I remember I got like this weird little. I think me and Jackson both got this like little hamster thing that had like the Ohio State symbol. Oh, it was like, it. It's like a fat round one with the yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really yeah. I remember walking there and it being like windy. Not like it was like a cold windy, but not like freezing cold. And had, then had we met Aunt Joyce before we went before we took Shane to college? I don't think so because I don't I don't remember any meeting her well before? Yeah. i have i had met her before at our wedding and i had talked to her throughout our marriage mm-hmm. and <clears throat> we had gone to when you guys were much smaller i think only two you two were alive i want to say no actually no it was only shane your mom and i and then because we had gone to cleveland and cincinnati on vacation and my mom got sick. Mm. I think we may have had we may have had no we yeah you were alive because you've you've seen my mom, Caden, but you were you were a newborn. Mm-hmm. And um, wait 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 slow down. That's not true. That is not true. She's only seen Shane. Exactly. I thought I thought she yeah because she died the following. We got married in two thousand one. She died in two thousand two. So near, correct. So yeah, we none went, of us none of us have met him. I met her besides Shane. Right, besides Shane. So and that's and I guess that's also the part of doing this series mm-hmm. with the whole amnesia part. We're all going to have a different side of that story. So yeah. when we went <clears> so backing up going to the vacation, we came. I actually got a call from one of my siblings and said, "Hey, you should probably come home because mom's sick. We don't think she's going to make it to the end of your trip." My mom, and so we came back. But on your trip, it's funny how you guys tell the part of the story, the fun part at Ohio State when we bought souvenirs and we would walk the campus and go. Remember also, like I also I remember when we, I think when we first came to Aunt Joyce's house because I remember it was like I remember there was a party at Aunt Joyce's house. I remember that much. I, well, there, at least there was the gathering of people there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, I think when we first got there, we like we had that, like, rental truck. I, I was oh, the van. Oh, rental van. We yeah. were like, oh, van, it's so spacious in here. We yeah. can climb yeah. around. And, yeah. and then, like, we uh, we got there. And I remember, like, I think I had fallen asleep because uh, I remember it was, like, super, it was, like, pretty bright. Oh, sorry. It was pretty bright out when we got there. I like, got off the plane, at least. And then when we got to Aunt Joyce's house, I was like, well, I remember I looking around. I was like, "What happened?" It got so dark like really quickly because it was like it was pretty dark by the time we got there. And I was like, "Huh?" And then I like I heard some lady's voice outside the truck, and I was like, "Who is that?" And I think and I was like, "Oh, it's Aunt Joyce." So, like, so we, like, we got to meet her and stuff. And uh, I think and we were like all like starting to go into the house and everything. And yeah, that's, that's so that's what I think is interesting because you guys are telling the what I consider to be the the fun part. 
the, like, tr- the trauma part for me that I remember of that trip was the was the dread of the flight there and the flight back mm-hmm. because that represented our first ever trip without mom. Oh yeah, and yeah. so I remember we didn't have suitcases. I had to get pre- prepped for suitcases, and you know how are we going to get everybody through the airport without my my tears. I would my freak out was how am I going to get these five boys through the airport mm-hmm. and not lose anybody in the crowded airports and baggage claim. That's why I made sure we all could, you know, bring our bags on the airplane. And then it wasn't even going that I was concerned with because I, I told we had single file line going down the escalators and we've got pics of that. Like you told me, it's like, you're going to bring you up the rear. So you really have to pay attention. And my, that's on the way home. And that was there, there too. Shane had the back. Oh, that's true. So that was I. I was okay with going, because I knew Shane was old enough to keep a watch on you guys while I was leading through the the you know clearing a path. Because nobody's gonna stand in front of me in the airport. You know, as long as you all stayed tight, you guys weren't gonna have any issues. But my concern was the way back, and we all need to find our way back. But sometimes to find our way back, we've got to get started. You've got to find that path, and you've got to stick to it. Got to stand there. And sometimes in finding that path, we have to be able to open our eyes and look down at our feet and then have the wherewithal and the strength to actually look ahead of us down the road and find out where the target is. And sometimes the target's tough to see because way out in the distance, we may see the city or the sign we're looking at or the, the, the light on the horizon as to where we're going. But we don't know where the road is going to twist and take us along the way. So for me, I have to be mindful of not just keeping my eye on the target in the distance, but I've also got to keep my eyes on the road itself. So as the road begins to turn and bend to the left or to the right, I'm not running off into a ditch because I'm just so fixated on the target, the destination, the final place we're supposed to be. I thank my two sons for being involved or just this week. And I thank you all for listening because if you have a story that, that deals with grief, like we're going through, we're going to talk through our story. And I don't have a thought as to how long this particular series is going to last, but it's where the Lord has us to be right now. Well, we've, we've had our eye on the target for so long and the road has been twisty and windy and hilly and bumpy over hill and over dale all around the dusty trail where, and I've run off, run us off onto the ditch because I wasn't looking at the road. But I encourage you all to look at the road and look at the Lord. Let the spirit of the Lord lead you as to where you need to be and how you need to be there. Certain relationships you need to mend and, and, and deal with. And there's certain relationships that we can't because it's been separated by death. Try not to get there. Do the things that you're supposed to do. So over the next few weeks, we're going to continue to tell our story. This is the Raising Men story. The gospel according to Raising Men. Or it's our story. It's it's part of even what fatherhood's taught me in the new book I'm writing as well. See you all next week right here on WKBY 1080 AM and the Raising Men Show.com.